Hi, it's Matt and Tom from the School Musicals Company. Um, nice to see you. Today I'm going to be chatting with Tom about his wonderful new version of The Wizard of Oz, uh, which came out January last year, January 2023, and has been staged in something like 30 countries already. Hugely popular. Tom. Matt. <laughs> um, why take on such a big story as The Wizard of Oz when there is a much loved version already out there? Ah, I, um, well, I think the, the main reason for me is that there's a great film version out there, but I'm not sure that there's necessarily a, a great accessible stage version right. that, you know, could, could be staged by schools and by drama groups. You know, the other version is, is, is superb and obviously, you know, has brilliant music. But I think it's hard. I think it's right. hard. And I think I wanted to, I just knew that the story itself, hey, I, I love the story. And it was a story I've always wanted to be able to tell in my own way. And, and then secondly, just to make sure that, you know, it was a really engaging and accessible version. Lots of different parts, you know, really just stretch out those parts so that, so that there's, there's more chance for more children to play more meaningful roles, which, which did mean sort of veering, you know, quite a lot from, from you know, very different from the film um, and, you know, to a certain extent different from the book as well. So it's just making it work as a show. Really. So, so where did you start? Well, I read the book. Um, How many quite times? A, well, quite a few <laughs> times, because it's quite a, a, you know, it's not what I'd um, really, I think most people know it through the, the film. And so the book itself is, is quite episodic and it's quite challenging actually in its own in its own way. So trying to then, distill it into what a 70 minute show um, was was quite challenging so sort of trying to decide what's what's the main story and you've obviously got the lovely you know movement of Dorothy from Kansas to Oz and back again so you've, so you've to a certain extent you've got the structure already but then in between you know you've, you've got certain characters that you absolutely want to include and you want to make sure you've got your villains in there as well because it adds to the drama mm -hmm. but then yeah just sort of making sure all the other um, characters were added in as sort of extra ones that would be still fun to play. Yeah. And did you write the songs in chronological order or um, what, what, what was the first song you wrote? I Can think actually the first song was Perfect Perfect Like You which is the song sung by the Scarecrow, the Tin Man and the Lion um, just because the tune came to me um, and uh, and I liked it and it was actually on writing that that I thought oh yeah okay, I, I could see this working as a show. Um, and then I wrote One Day in Kansas, which is the big sort of oh, opener and the cyclone. Yeah. Once, I, once I added the cyclone into that, um, and it was really dramatic, I could, I could just tell that the, that plus Perfect Like You, I could start to see the shape of the show. Mm. Yeah. And the arrangements that were done by James Welsh, I think. So have the back, really the brought, they brought the back and tracks. They've really brought the show to life, haven't they? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, fantastic. So the drama of the cyclone, which, you know, when I wrote it on the piano, you, you can still get a sense of it. And if you, if you played it on just the sheet music, I think it would still come across. But when you start to throw in the drums, mm. you know, and you start to throw in these sort of sounds that, you know, you wouldn't sort of be able to naturally recreate just using, the, you know, the, the, the piano. And, and from an age range point of view, where, where ideally where, are you, where, are you, where do you see the scope? Well, I, th I think it actually has huge scope because the story itself is, it's, it's a, a younger sort of, um, you know, our sort of upper primary 10, 11, 12, I would say, in terms of the themes. But then the, the, really I could see I mean, given, given that you know, in the original film we essentially had a young woman playing Dorothy, yeah. there's nothing to stop a sort of 15, 16 year old sort of cast taking it on. It's accessible, it's challenging in its own way, you know, it could be simplified depending on how old the cast are. So yeah, I, I think probably sort of 9 to 16. Nine to <laughs> push. And yeah. could a school put this on if they wanted to, if they had a band? Yeah. I mean, it would lend itself brilliantly to a band. So, um, it, you know, certainly the drums and the guitars, just a traditional band, really. But then there's some lovely, if you listen to James's um, backing tracks, there's some lovely orchestral bits in there as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so what do you, what do you remind everybody? What do you actually get? What do you get in the book? What do you get with the music? What, uh, so if, so you buy, if you buy this, what do you actually get? So you get, uh, within the, the book or the digital version, you get um, obviously the full script and all of the sheet music. 
uh, including all of the sheet music for the incidental scene change music. Uh, you get the, the usual stuff about you know all, all the char what, which characters are in which scenes, um, what the line tallies for each character uh, are. Which must be really useful. Well, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, I, I would have found as a director, I would have found it useful. That's why you know I just think you know you're trying to make it as as easy and as as accessible as you can for whoever's putting it on. And just by providing all that extra information, it just means that process of trying to cast it, trying to create your rehearsal schedule, trying to work out which days to, to mm -hmm. rehearse, which scenes and which people you need on which day, that sort of thing. It just makes that a lot easier. And how much time, if, if you were a school or, or drama group thinking mm. about putting this on, mm. how much lead time before a production would you, would you say is ideal? If, if I was putting it on in a secondary school, I, I would probably give this the best part of a term, okay. um, maybe even auditioning, you know, the end of the previous term. But I, I would probably give it best part of a term, rehearsing a, a couple of times a week, possibly a little you know, Sunday thrown in here and there when you get close to the performance. If I was um, in a primary school or, or a, uh, yeah, if I was in primary school and I was doing it as like an end of year show, I know that a lot of the time they, they sort of collapse the timetable and work on it um, okay. a bit. So it's the sort of show, I mean, you could probably do this at a push. You could probably do it in a couple of weeks. Um, you could probably even do it as a, as, if you're a youth theatre, you could probably do it as like a summer showcase. Right. If you're working really intensively on it. Uh, especially if, you know, if the kids know the music before, if, if, you, if, they're, if they're allowed to listen to the songs in advance. A lot of the time, I think if the songs are really engaging, which, you know, we, we we've been told they are within this mm -hmm. show then the kids get drawn in by the songs and they're really enthused by the the songs to really commit to the show in my experience a show is easy to do when the children commit sure. their own time yeah, and effort yeah. and they bring yeah. so much to it you don't want to be having to drag them through it but this is why you know making sure that there's lots of good parts for lots of children mm -hmm. means that that many more of them will commit to the process get fully involved and then as a director it's a lot easier when they've learned their lines when they know the songs you know and lastly two of the songs have been added to the abrsm musical theatre uh, singing is curriculum three of them. is it three yeah so toto toto wicked which yeah. is sung by the wicked witch of the west and um small which is sung okay. by the mice in the poppy field about when the scarecrow says well how can you be i mean that's an early accolade isn't it yeah, absolutely. Is, absolutely. absolutely. It's, funny it's, it's, the, it's funny because if you look on the ABRSM musical theatre syllabus, it sits alongside of some of the songs from the film, which is, which is, which is interesting. So well, it's great. I mean, yeah. amazing. It's been a real success. And thanks for watching. This is Matt and Tom from School Musicals Company talking about The Wizard of Oz, which is available to buy from theschoolmusicalscompany.com. Thanks for listening and watching.